Shalom, shalom. Welcome to Revelation TV. You're watching God Day. God bless you all. Shall we pray before we um, uh, speak into the Word of God? And uh, just uh, let's just love the Lord and uh, welcome the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Our Father, we love you, praise you, we thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you stand with us no matter what uh, we go through, no matter the situation. Uh, you are bigger and greater than that. I thank you, Lord Jesus, as you commanded your people of Israel to place the word of God in front of them so every day they could look to your word and if there was a healing they needed, they would be healed. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you'll give us insight to your word today and will enlighten our heart, mind, soul, spirit and body through your word. I thank you. I love the teaching of Lord Jesus Christ. It brings life and it, uh, it, it gives us joy to know that the Lord is teaching us uh, his way of, uh, uh, of life, the, the life that we should live according to his word. So I thank you, Father, as you are already blessing us. And we want to say thank you. Thank you for answering our prayers. Thank you for healing us. Thank you for giving us lovely family and providing for all our needs. At this moment, Father, we need spiritual food. So please feed us. We're ready, Holy Spirit. Talk to us and we are ready to listen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, thank you very much uh, for staying tuned to Revelation TV. God day it is, and I'm going to share the word of God. And that's what this program is all about. We bring you a short message, though it's short, but it's very, very powerful. And again, I say the teaching of Lord Jesus Christ is powerful. I know there are people always looking for a word from a prophet and a, and a word of knowledge uh, or a word of healing, whatever. And you know, this is above all that. The word of God is so authentic, so pure and so powerful. And uh, when, it, uh, when you begin to read it, it's, it's, um, it can change your countenance, it can change your appearance, uh, because that's the work it does, you know. You don't need to go to a beauty parlor um, to, to, you know, ha to purify yourself. Yeah, you know, sometimes we need to, but this is the, the heavenly beauty parlor, which will uh, just uh, beautifully um, uh, shine you, you know, in a, in a special way. Amen. So we're looking at, we could be looking at the life of Peter uh, through this chapter which I'm going to share, which is the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, or we could be just saying, God, the Lord, our God is calling. So I have titled this program, The Lord is Calling. And it's very important that we recognize His calling. Uh, and so many of our, um, us are uh, called, uh, but few are chosen, the, the Word of God says. But let us uh, be the ones that are uh, called and chosen, and that we remain by our Lord's side. Uh, so chapter 5, I will be looking at that, and also we'll be looking into the Old Testament, as we will be reminded that the people in the Old Testament were the same, uh, uh, same as uh, they are in the New Testament, and the same people like you and me today. Um, so it's very relevant um, to our... Um, everyday life, the scriptures as we read them. Uh, Gospel of Luke chapter 5, I'm going to read. So it was, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret, and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, that's Lord Jesus Christ, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. That's wonderful, isn't that beautiful? Uh, the Lord teaching his people from the boat. And uh, when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a, a great, large, great number of fish and their nets were breaking. So they saw a signal to their partners in the, in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so they, that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at, his, at Jesus' knees um, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of the fish which they had um, taken. Um, so we can carry on reading uh, up to 11. And so also with James and, uh, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all 
and followed him. You know, this verse here, um, verse 10, do not be afraid from now on you will catch men. This is uh, something amazing that we learn about Peter, his life that the Lord is looking deep down into his soul. And there are, there are things probably Peter is hiding uh, or maybe there is excuses he's making. But once he saw the glory of Lord Jesus Christ, the authority he saw, how, you know, he was disappointed. He was a, a, a failed businessman, basically, because he hadn't caught any fish. And, and as Jesus looked at, looked, looked at him, his, his, his way of thinking changed. His, his, you know, he, he, was, he just realized that he, became, he was a sinful man. He thought of all the, maybe there was a hidden sin or maybe, you know, he was, because uh, uh, maybe he was angry at someone, but he really felt guilty in the presence of the Lord. So the Lord is calling, he has called you and me to share the gospel with, with the world. He has called you and me to be the light and the salt of the world. And today we can check and see what are we doing for the kingdom of God. Is it that we are so busy with our own world? We're so busy with our phone, we are so busy with our job, and we're so busy with the things uh, uh, that others have involved us in. Uh, where is our focus? What are we focusing on? Are we telling people? Are we sharing the love and the good news of Jesus Christ? Um, I see um, some of the Christians I'm highly disappointed with. Uh, they are my very close friends. Um, they do share their, uh, their uh, meals with the, with the people who are not believers yet. And they share uh, their jokes with them. They share uh, uh, their um, you know celebrations with them, their birthdays and anniversaries. But I never hear them tell them about Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm highly disappointed. I'm secretly praying for my relatives and my friends that they, though they share uh, you know their bread and water with them, but they never have told them that they are sinners and they need to repent and they need Jesus Christ. In fact, that's something that I have never come across while I'm with them. So that grieves my heart, that grieves my spirit. And if Lord Jesus was sitting in the midst of people like that, wouldn't he love them? Do you just love them uh, for, the, for, the, uh, for, the, the, for their profession, uh, you know, these friends, or do you just love them for what they have, uh, or you just love them because you have good time together? No, this is all temporary. This is all going to come to, to an end, but you want to spend eternity with the people that you love. So what would you do? You would share Jesus with with them. Yes, you will share your clothes with, with your friends, you will share your meals with them. But if you leave Jesus out, you're not doing, you're not fulfilling the calling that you have on your life. If you say you're a believer, you're a disciple of Jesus Christ, and you do not open your mouth and, and tell your friend that how uh, you, know, you need uh, Jesus, uh, how you need a personal savior, how you need relation, uh, a personal relationship with, with God. If you don't do that, you're just wasting your time and you are not being being honest because the word of God says if you say there is no God heathens say that people pagan worshippers say that there is no God and that 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 means they're liars that's what the word of God says so basically if you're not telling them about Jesus Christ uh, your friendship it means nothing uh, you're not being honest with God so you can't say you're you're a Christian uh, but you're not denying the Christian life you're denying the Christian message um, so that's where um, I'm grieved highly at times I go home and I hide myself in the room and I weep before the Lord and I said I repent Lord because I was present in that crowd I was present with those people and though I said little but it was not enough for, for them to be convicted because the word of God says the Holy Spirit will come he will convict the world of sin of righteousness of judgment all these things and I said Lord I was not able to do that so this is what uh, I think uh, brought my attention to this this page here uh, in the Gospel of Luke as we're looking because it's important that if we are Christians if we are called by God then we must be faithful we must be honest with our Lord Jesus Christ we can't just say okay I'm wearing a cross uh, that's good enough because I'm bearing a, a witness for Jesus Christ but that cross is powerful only when it, it, is, it matches with our lifestyle. It is only powerful when it matches with, 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 with our actions. It is only powerful, it's only speaking then when we are faithful and honest with our words. So it's no good just wearing a cross, a symbol uh, to keep the demons off or to keep say, <laughs> Satan away, but it is a powerful symbol that must reflect our life. We must live the life that, that Jesus gives us. And that's his promise that if we are faithful to him, he is faithful and just towards us. So if you're walking two steps towards him, he will walk 10 
steps towards us. Maybe I have added a few extra steps, or maybe seven steps he will walk towards us, but he will surely come to us. Um, so this, this is something I wanted to share that, yes, we are Christians, but are we sharing Jesus with others? If we are not, we're being very stingy, okay? Uh, yes, we can be stingy with our wallet. We can be really stingy with the, with, with the other things, uh, like sharing a house, but do not be so stingy with sharing Jesus. You share him. And, you know, you get the opportunity in a church to speak, uh, even if it's a short prayer, just get up and, and just, just boldly say, if there's anybody here who doesn't know Jesus, he's calling you. And that is what the message of the, the gospel is. He's calling, God is calling the world to come to repentance, to come to him, to come to know him. So in, in the year 1995, I received that calling on my life. And I can see that at that time, when I read the scriptures, it says, do not be afraid from now on, you will catch men. Lord Jesus said to Peter. At that time, Peter is obviously looking back at his life. And because Jesus is so holy, so pure, so calm, so humble, so wonderful that he just, he doesn't feel worthy to be standing in his presence. And that's exactly how I feel, felt when he called me. I cried when he called me. And he said, do you not know that I have the answer to all the questions that you've been carrying all this time? Because I was going to people, I was going to places to find answers and peace. But he said, I have the answer. So I remember and I thought, I said, how can God come to me? And that's exactly how Peter is fa um, facing Jesus. And because Jesus in his holiness is calling him. And he says, Jesus, I can't. I'm a sinful man. Go away from me. He's literally saying that because there is things that has troubled him. There is things that are, that, are, that are coming before him. And he's saying he's not worthy to be standing in the presence of the Lord. He's not worthy to be called by Jesus. But could you be feeling like that? I'm sure at times you have felt that. And if you're feeling that you're called, you want to go and tell your relatives, your friends, your community, uh, people around you at work, you want to tell them about Jesus, but it's something that's holding you back. You're scared just in case you get sacked from work, or maybe your friends will, uh, you know, disown you, or maybe they won't call you out after work, after Friday evening to hang around the pub or hang around the bar. They might not do that. That's okay. Jesus would go to such places and share the gospel. And I'm so grateful to the Lord when I hear young people are opening up their heart in their conversation. They're talking about Jesus. They're alarmed by the end times. They are um, they're amazed by, uh, by the, 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 the things that are unfolding according to the Bible before them. So I'm so glad that the Lord is working on the hearts and the minds of young people. There are a lot of young people, young uh, uh, evangelists who are out on the streets. And one of them is my brother. And I just want to say, when Jesus called me, I thank God that I did not keep this good news to myself. But I went and shared all the way to India. I took a journey with my two young children. They were only like two and three years old and I took them in a twin buggy and I wanted to tell all my friends and my relatives, my childhood friend, I wanted to tell them that Jesus is the way, the truth and life. He is the word of God. He is the, he is the only eternal guru. You need to come to him. And you know what? Today, I thank God that my younger brother, his family, they've come to know the Lord. My cousins come to know the Lord, all his entire family, and they're all witnessing uh, uh, for the Lord. My cousin in, in India, Punjab, he's running a church uh, and he's got a large gathering that he's, uh, he's uh, teaching and, and training and baptizing them in Punjab. So, and also my brother here, who is a, who is a street evangelist, and he said he gave Bible to three different people this Saturday just gone. He said, people are hungry. They want to know the word of God. And people are coming secretly, whether they're Muslims or Hindus or Sikhs or whoever they are, atheists. Yes, they might come and argue with them. But they said, there is a hope in Jesus. Let's begin to speak the word of truth with all goodness and with all grace and mercy that God has given and shown to us. So coming back to, to the word of God again, you know, Peter was afraid. You could be afraid. I am afraid. But when we have our challenges, the challenges will come, problems will come, but that's that is a training ground. We mustn't, we mustn't, you know, uh, uh, try and say we want to escape from it. Let trouble not come to it. It will come to train us. Demons will come and torment us. They will come and trouble us, but they cannot possess us. We, the Lord our God 
trains us to deal with these things and that's what a calling is on our life. So if somebody is demon possessed, don't be scared and say, oh, don't bring this person to my church or to my house because I don't know how to deal with this person. No, stand firm on your faith and rebuke the enemy and he will flee. So I thank you, Lord Jesus, that as you have called us and we want to be witness for you. And like I said, like I said, my cousin, my brother, but that's not enough. I'm not satisfied with that. And so was Peter. He wasn't once he saw God's glory. You know, he was on, on, um, on a mountaintop where he had his experience, you know, and he wanted to do something for the kingdom, for, for the Lord. And there is a time that he denied. And all these things he faced and went through, yet he died uh, uh, a, 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 a martyr's death. He died uh, uh, hanging upside down on a cross. See, this is, this is the glory of God that can, when it comes in and upon your life, it can turn your life and situation around. And Peter, you know, stood up firm. He stood firm in, in the faith. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that he did not deny. Well, he did deny, but he repented. And he was just, uh, just you know, like any other person. Uh, fear followed him. Fear is a demon that follows us around. But we must learn to rebuke it and to, and to get rid of it in Jesus' name. Okay, let's turn to another uh, beautiful story that we can, we can look at as... Um, there were other people who were called and uh, they made up excuses. Uh, I remember uh, meet in my early um, age um, as a Christian, I met this doctor and, uh, um, and he was, uh, of course, very successful. He had a big house. He had everything going. He was from Pakistan. And he says, uh, you know, I come from a very poor family and my desire is to build a good big church uh, for, the, for the Lord. But he said, I cannot do that uh, till I have, uh, uh, I have uh, built my own clinic uh, and and my children are studying in a in in, in a uh, private taking private education until I become successful he goes I cannot build that church for the Lord you know I don't think God has called people like that who who want to do build their own homes first and then think of God God is not asking anybody to build a, a church and stuff like that but that is up to you if God gives you the grace and gives you the vision and the calling so some people think looking at others because they're serving the Lord Faithfully, they think they should be copying them and or maybe they justify uh, the conversation when it's taking place. Oh, I want to do something for the Lord. But when I am done with mine, when I've built a house for myself, that's not the way our God works. So looking at, uh, at uh, the book of Exodus, chapter 3, verse 10 to 12, you know, uh, is, is beautiful when Moses was also called. You know, God called him. He had personal one-to-one -one with him. Now go, I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Verse 12, God answered, I will be with you and this will be your sign that I have sent you. You know, I don't know anybody who's been called, um, uh, uh, who, who's been called out of a, a burning bush, uh, you know, by a name to say that I'm sending you to go bring my people out of slavery. I'm sending you, Moses, uh, to go face Pharaoh and bring my people back. Remember the whole story, as you know, as... Um, Moses was uh, in Midian. Uh, it's a beautiful story about Moses, but we're looking at the calling when he was called. And he's, he, said, he said, I stutter. He started making all these excuses. I can't go. Who oh, am I, Lord? You know, I've just escaped those people and you're sending me right back there. That could be your situation. Maybe a job that you had a long time ago, uh, you know, you gave up and, and now you've you got the opportunity to go back again. And you're thinking, how am I going to, you know, uh, 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 present myself? Because I'm a changed person. I'm not no longer like that. How are you going to do it? So God will help us. He said, I will be with you. So don't make any excuses because we can come become very good at making excuses and saying, oh, I can't speak like so and so. I can't, you know, preach like Joyce Meyer. Uh, I, I can't be like such and such person. But the Lord is saying, I want you to be who you are, come to him just as you are. So Moses was uh, uh, was called out of a burning bush, and you know it was, it's just it's amazing, a crazy story when we look at it that he was called out of a burning bush. But when God revealed Himself to Moses out of a burning burning bush, what did Moses said? He drew closer to God. 
that he might speak to him. He did do that. This was his action. So if God is calling you, you're seeing thing, yeah, there are desires in your heart to serve the Lord, but you're, you're, you're hearing it, but you're not putting it into practice. So you can imagine this is how Moses is, be, is, is coming closer to the, the burning bush to hear that the Lord may speak to him. He's longing to hear Yahweh's voice. He's longing to hear from God. Maybe you've said yourself uh, to yourself or your friends, I want God to speak to me, but God is already speaking to you. And if he is not speaking to you, then come closer to him. Go closer to him like Moses did. And then the Lord told Moses his plan. He, he opened up his whole plan as he came closer to the burning bush to hear from the Lord that he may hear because he knew this was something supernatural that was happening that has never happened before. And there was a longing in his heart to hear from the Lord. So God speaks to him and he says, this is my plan. You go uh, my plan is to deliver the children of Israel out of their Egyptian bondage. They were in slavery. They were in a bondage. What is your bondage? What is, what is it that you're slave to today that's not letting you go and serve the Lord? What is it? We, we can have a checklist. What is it that's holding you back? Or is it like that doctor who said once, oh, everything is well and good for me, then I will go and build a church for the Lord in Pakistan? Or when, when I will build a church first and then God will take care of everything? Put God first, serve him first. That is our calling. We cannot be saying we are called, but yet we are not uh, you know, faithful to, to even to witness to our family and our friends. We don't even give one witness. Let your conversation be seasoned with love. You know, every time I speak to my mother, she's 87, I always mention, I say, Jamasiki means praise the Lord. And she might not reply me back, but I know that I have spoken the Lord's name. I have greeted her in, in Lord's name. And then I will, I will in my conversation with love. Yesterday we were visiting somebody and he recognized us. He said, oh, you're from TV uh, channel. And, and we started talking. And I was told that that person is very stubborn. He does not listen to Christians and because he's so strong in his own religion, he will not have any conversation with Christians. But, you know, um, glory be to God, we were almost there for 55 minutes and all we talked about was the Bible. And he was so intrigued and, and, and the people that we were visiting, they said, we are really surprised that he listened to you for this long. Usually he would not hold that kind of a conversation because he cannot stand Christians. And I said, you know, we cannot force people to love our God. We cannot force uh, Yahweh onto anyone. We cannot force Jesus. Jesus does not like that. We just have to let Jesus do his, have his own way and work his own way uh, into every individual's life. So that's why I'm saying wearing a cross doesn't make us a Christian. Wearing a cross does not make, uh, you know, um, align us with the word of God. It's just a symbol, but that symbol reflects the love and the heart and the plan of God on that cross, Jesus Christ. So we just said, yeah, we spoke about end times and that person was so intrigued and said, yeah, let's have more of this conversation again. And the people we were visiting, my friends, they said, well, that's so awesome because you wouldn't hear any of this. So when Moses came closer to the Lord and the Lord said, look, I'm sending you to go and free my people from bondage, from slavery, from Pharaoh. Yes, he knew Pharaoh very well. He knew his army. He knew his strength. He knew, he knew everything about him because he was raised by Pharaoh. But was, was he scared? Just like Peter. He said, I'm afraid, Lord. Go away from me. I'm not capable of, of this calling. And so is Moses is saying the same thing. He's seeing the burning bush. He's seeing, he's hearing God's voice personally. But at, even then, he's saying, I'm not ready. Not me. Send Joshua. Send someone else, but not me. We can make these excuses, but God said, I'm interested in you. He's looking at you. He's saying, I'm calling you. You listen to me and I will be with you. So that's what the word of God says. When he listened, the Lord was with him. Moses is to leave Midian and go back to Egypt. And the Egyptian king, obviously, just like I said, is, uh, is, uh, is going to let go of, of God's people once Moses puts the plan on the table. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that Moses is promised that he will uh, uh, successfully return with God's people, which he did. You know, they, they journeyed through. Uh, almost uh, 40 years in the wilderness and amazing way the Lord liberated the Israelites uh, and they, as they went through different locations. And so uh, everything that was spoken in the book of Exodus was fulfilled. So what are we saying? Moses uh, wasn't ready to go. Peter wasn't ready to go. And there was another person, Jeremiah. He said, uh, Jeremiah 1, 
um, chapter 1, verse 6 to 8, also says, he said, Allah's sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. He's also making excuses. And But the Lord said to me, do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. So you see the fear, the spirit of fear, the demon of fear was in the Old Testament and also in the New Testament. And it's also present here today with people. When God called me, I said, yes, Lord, I love you so much. I'm madly in love with you, but I will not tell my family. I will not tell my friends because they will disown me. I will have no, no you know, brothers and sisters. I will have no family. They will not. They'll say, what, what's this new religion that you have taken over? But God's love is so powerful. It does not side. It does, it's, God is not a partial God. He does not side with religion. He does not side with the way a man thinks. That's why the word of God says his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. So here Jeremiah is also making excuses. And when we make excuses, the Lord laughs at us. You know, he, he doesn't get angry. He laughs at us. And he's, he knows how to, how to get around. So, and I said, look, I'm not going to tell anybody I'm Christian. Um, you know, that's it. I'll just keep it to myself. But the Lord said, oh, the love that I will put in your heart, the light that I will shine, that will speak for itself. You won't have to say anything. So Jeremiah also says, he goes, go away, Lord, from me. I cannot. I'm too young. And I don't, I, I'm, I'm just uh, afraid that I can't speak uh, the way you want me to speak. And how can I go and rescue your people? Uh, but the Lord said, do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you. You know, oftentimes I've applied this uh, verse on some of the time that I go and pray with non-believers or even with some families that are really kind of, you know, they, they won't hear, hear the Lord. But the Lord says, do not be afraid of their countenance. Do not be afraid of their houses. Do not be afraid of their positions, but just stand like Moses. You know, sometimes I say, yes, I do have the blessing or the anointing of Moses because yes, you know, you just have to, you just have to look at the word. Like Jeremiah, the Lord said, don't be afraid, just speak and I will deliver my people. So I want to say thank you, Lord, as we're coming towards the end of the program. It's so exciting, it's so beautiful that we have seen as Peter was afraid when Jesus came close to him because he, he could feel his presence. It was so glorious, it was so pure and so holy. We see that Peter was afraid. But that is a beautiful godly fear the Lord recognized. Uh, the Lord knows that we have fear. Mary, you know, she feared. There's so many people in the Bible, but because Peter is called, the Lord takes that fear away. He puts that godly fear in him rather than the fear of the, uh, the persecution or the fear of Satan that, that, uh, that comes, uh, uh, you know, living in this world. So another thing we have looked at is Moses was also scared because obviously he had murdered an Egyptian and he was to, to go back to the same place. He was scared, you know, what would be the outcome. So we've looked at how God helped him. He came closer to God and God delivered uh, the entire nation. Uh, and then we look at Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I, you know, I can't, you know, what can I do? I'm too young. Would they really hear me? Would they listen to me? He was a weeping a prophet and he wept for the nation of Israel. You know, at the same time, he was scared. He had desired. He was unable to, you know, go along with that because he had calling on his life. Are you called to serve the Lord? And what is it that's holding you back? We have looked at three different examples and we can learn so much from them. You know, I just love you with God's love. May the Lord uh, um, show you your calling and may you be faithful unto him. God bless you. Take care. Shalom. Shalom.